Well, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, a few words on the Genius Loki, the location where we are. You walked in and passed by the bust of uh, Pope Benedict. He used to be a member of this academy before he became Pope. You are watched by Pope Francis um, over there and by Pope Pius XI, who gave this academy its uh, distinguished characteristics uh, in the 1920s, early 1930s. Status of great independence, a very unusual institution in any uh, religious community. Um, the academicians uh, together uh, in the two academies, about 100, are highly distinguished academics. Um, I welcome many of you, some of you here in the audience. They are elected in secret ballot and appointed by the Pope. Um, and uh, of course, they all serve pro bono. So um, um, I also welcome all of you who are volunteering to contribute to this important meeting. A special welcome to governors and mayors, those who are already here um, from various hemispheres. Uh, more of uh, you will be joining us uh, in the next couple of days. And many thanks again to academicians, uh, Professor Ramanasan and uh, Professor Suarez Sharosko for their leadership in making this um, conference possible and so uh, rich in content. Ladies and gentlemen, the um, Pontifical Academies of Science and Social Science have over the past 20 years addressed the evolving climate crisis and called for urgent action. In the past four years alone, we had eight conferences that addressed climate crisis aspects. We also included political leaders, heads of nations, corporate and civil society leaders, and religious leaders. We have benefited and continue to benefit from the great support by the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for this critical agenda. Where we listen to? The answer is yes. I can, for example, refer to the Climate Change and Health Conference in 2017 with um, um, leadership from the World Health Organization, its Director General, and the follow-up to it at COP23 in Bonn in the same year. I can also refer to the faith and science dialogues arranged by the United Kingdom and Italy with our academies and about 30 leaders of world religions hosted by Pope Francis here. That was followed up in the Conference of the Parties in Sharm el-Sheikh and um, in, um, in Dubai last year, where food, agriculture, and water came on the COP agenda for the first time in significant ways. Those were the focal themes of the Faith and Science Dialogues because food and water relate so closely to resilience of uh, or lack thereof of poor people. And I can refer to meetings of our academy with food experts and Rome-based food organization leaders, uh, FAO, World Food Program, and IFAD, that drew attention to climate resilience in 22 and 24, uh, and had some influence on the Food Systems Summit and the COP processes. But the more relevant question, whether we were listened to, is, is action on climate crisis sufficient? And the answer is no. The answer is no, and that is why this conference with you is so important. Ladies and gentlemen, on occasion of the 300th birthday of Immanuel Kant this month, I remind us of his three guiding questions of reason. His and our first question should be, what can I do? What can I know? What can I know? That comes first. We need the science base for the agenda before us. Kant's second question of reason is, what shall I do? 
So in setting our agenda, we emphasize the interrelationship of the three planetary crises, climate change, biodiversity loss, and high inequality. Climate change amplifies the other two crises. The poorest three billion contribute less than 10%, yet suffer to greenhouse gas emissions, yet suffer the most. They are the least resilient. By adaptation, but adaptation financing is only a small fraction to climate finance, neglecting the poor. Further on, what, uh, on the question, what shall I do? The Kant question number two, the action agenda put forward at this conference includes first, rapidly reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. Secondly, adaptation to unavoidable climate change. And three, societal transformation <laughs> with shifts in consumption and shifts towards circular economy. This agenda is complex and includes trade-offs on the pathways to the future. Trade-offs between mitigation and adaptation, for instance, also when it comes to finance. A science for resilience agenda, therefore, has to be part of the action, not an add-on or an afterthought or simply some disconnected accompanying thing. That science agenda includes science on energy, agriculture, food and water, technology options for carbon uh, dioxide removal, public health, financing resilience and the macroeconomics of climate resilience, and transformation science related to the construction sector and the whole economy, moving us towards a circular economy with a bioeconomy. This science must be relevant for the local level in cities and states. Regional climate adaptation science centers could integrate resilient science and education to inform local community, governments, business, and prepare future generations on resilience issues. The young generation at schools have the right to know what is coming, the right to be heard and to be included as actors. In closing, Immanuel Kant's third question is, what may I hope for? What may I hope for? Climate change hits, as you know, at the local level with storms, floods, and, um, um, and um, droughts, and people get displaced by climate shocks. Therefore, at this uh, conference, we call for concerted action by leaders at the decentralized level of government, the states and cities. The level of ambition and action at central government levels was often not satisfactory. We must draw on local knowledge, including that of indigenous people. Decentralization serves pro-poor adaptation if it includes meaningful political, fiscal, and administrative decentralization. The global voice of local government in matters of climate policy needs amplification. We want to add to that with the support of you and with Pope Francis. In the increasingly divided world, ladies and gentlemen, climate policy action must be the large island of consensus for collective action. Science communities and faith communities can play and do play positive roles for that together with you. With you, the mayors and uh, governors um, that you have decided to join us. Action across political dividing lines must be possible. That is what we hope from this summit. Thank you for your attention.